I'm Carla with Grace to Walk, and these are just some thoughts on a Sunday. And uh, what I normally do at this time is I give a short update about um, where we're at in our um, progress of um, helping some African Christians in their image creation journey. And um, I got into this. Um, so I was helping a friend, uh, Mark Ritchie, with his ministry. He's teaching Bible studies in Pakistan. Uh, last October, this is literally how it happened. He asked me if I could um, fill in for him on uh, his his classes, and I said, "What are you teaching?" And he said, "Well, we've been doing the um, covering the arguments for God in John chapter one." He's like, "But just you know, just do a Q and A, so basically just swing it." So I go into the first class, and um, I say. Uh, so Mark didn't give us a plan, but he said, so let's just talk about what, we can just talk about whatever you want to talk about. I can't tell you how many times I thought if I had reframed that, that statement a little bit differently, how much these things would have, this all, how different life would have been. Because I don't know that I would have gotten involved with this if I hadn't had said it in that way. But what had happened is that t Pakistan, they're, they're in Islamabad, Pakistan had just set a deadline for, that they, they didn't have valid visas that um, they were going to eject, you know, any foreign nationals that didn't have a valid visa. So this started this whole thing. And um, so life has been a little bit crazy since October. And um, I've, it's kind of been life. I've learned a lot in the last few months. Um, we have kind of gone, from, we've actually started with like 60 people between these two Bible cities. And our group has kind of grown. We have some people, originally it was just all Christians, and then we have people that have been helping us. And so I've kind of like, you know, they're kind of our people now because they've been helping my people. And so um, we have some, some Muslims too that um, I'm trying to help along on that way. And it's, it's been an experience. And uh, one of the things that we're doing is you know, we're looking at immigration paths, we're trying to help them while they're there, and like I said, we've had more people that we're trying to help come in, but there's also been a lot of people come into this that, um, you know, friends, you know, of mine that have just helped me in different ways, and so um, one of those, this is somebody that I met through this, this is Mark's longtime friend, um, Don Shire. He has a ministry, and he has helped us in that um, he's allowing us to uh, partner with his ministry for um, helping the Afghan Christians like on donations and things for the stuff that they need. So anyway, that's what this normally is. And usually I have kind of like a topic and I'll, I will give an update about uh, where we're at, like what's happened in the last week. And I almost didn't even do it today because I, I don't really feel like as far as progress with where I'm at with them has really even, anything's even happened. But what I was thinking about doing on Tuesday was I was going to um, have a uh, d discussion about manipulation because I was just seeing in the news about Afghanistan that there was a lot of manipulation in the media about, um, let me go down and find it. I have all my, I have a lot of overlays today, but um, there was a lot of manipulation in the media about the Taliban because there is a big push to recognize them um, officially like give them some credibility and so I was like you know I'm thinking what what is going on here like they it is so horrific in Afghanistan and it's um, I mean they are literally I mean if you're not in the Taliban you're basically at risk of starvation or being killed I mean that's, that's basically what it is it's it's horrible it's absolutely horrible and like who could possibly even consider recognizing them? It, it's just ridiculous. But there are all these articles, and there have been for a while. But there's, um, so like this is an article, and it's, you know, helping like, oh, we just have to talk to them. They're just, it's going to get better, you know, if we just talk to them. And then, um, you know, there's just, just this huge push of uh, to recognize them. And then there was, just recently, there was this, um, they were going to, the UN decided that, okay, well, we might recognize them. And so then there was this big uproar, and there was actually a protest yesterday by Afghan women protesting the UN 
develop, you know, recognizing them. So I'm thinking, okay, there's that, that manipulation going on. And then our school board election, early voting started Monday, which, and that's all kinds of crazy. And it's like, just kind of watching what's going on. It's a little funny to me because like, I know like the players and I, it, it's just like, if you know the players in the backstory, there's like so much, so much drama, like that just who's sending out which flyers and who's endorsed by whom that, you know, you just don't even realize all the drama that's there. So I was going to, I was going to talk about that and then something happened on Wednesday and it just like, you know, totally just threw me off. Like I, I haven't, I had all these things I was planning on doing for the Afghans this week. I have a whole list of things. I was just sitting down going to, you know, I've, I've been thinking about this. I need to like organize everything. So I have my information, um, in order. I use ClickUp, so I was going to use that, you know, and, and then I have to kind of, I've tried doing that before, but I couldn't really like get it ordered in my mind about how I need to structure it. And then there's this thing that happens pers personally. So I have, we have this international manipulation going on, local community, and then I get this situation that is just really, um, I mean, it shouldn't bother me as much as it does, but, um, Anyway, so I, I really haven't gotten that much done, and I was thinking, I didn't, I didn't even, wasn't even gonna do, wasn't even gonna do a stream today because I thought, I, what am I gonna say? And I thought, oh yeah, that's the theme. The theme is manipulation. So, you know, for me personally, I mean, this is the thing. Like I, it's not that only enough about recognizing manipulative tactics, but you have to like actually stand against them and like not. Um, not give in to them and that's one of the things that I'm I don't know it's standing against it I guess it's I just realized that I need to be more cautious about when I recognize things are manipulative because you know I'm thinking okay I can handle this I can handle dealing with somebody that operates in this way and obviously I can't so that's been um, that's been this week but one of the things that I wanted to talk about was, um, you know, what, like I said, what manipulation looks like. And this is um, examples of what happens, like personal manip manipulation. It's gaslighting, you know, and then love bombing, like, oh yeah, you're so awesome. You know, and then like, you know, they deny, you know, if you call them on some of their actions, they deny it or they excuse it or they don't acknowledge it or whatever. I mean, those are just signs of manipulative people. And um, in Char in uh, my friend Charlotte, uh, we did a live stream with her uh, on about her book, Light in the Darkness, is uh, devotionals for trauma survivors. But the journal, and um, you know, I had mentioned there that I know how manipulation makes me feel before I kind of reason it out and um, I don't know I guess it's uh, having to recognize that and rec also recognizing that it's more dangerous than I think it is I, I just I guess I need to be more careful about that in the future but anyway so going back to you know Afghanistan I'm looking at all these um, these news articles coming out and it's just so weird you know I've been like since since I started getting involved in this I've had to learn about immigration options and I've been trying to think okay well what is what is the stick what is the holdup why are we you know we said we would stand by our, our allies in Afghanistan and we provide a path for them there's a show of these, you know, SIB applications and humanitarian parole applications. There's another path that's coming up uh, that's going to be opening up in uh, in a couple months um, through Welcome Corps, which I'm hoping will be a better option. But if it's the same as humanitarian parole, which you know they're they're denying the majority of Afghan applications, 
It's like, what is going on? You know, what is going on? And I've been trying to, I, I'm still not quite sure. I mentioned last week that I think maybe possibly it might have to do with the fact that the acting ambassador um, in Afghanistan at the time, Ross Wilson, has a wife who is a career diplomat in the State Department. I've had multiple people tell me that it's a State Department and it's a stick, but I also had somebody else that said it was Biden, but it doesn't, so I, I don't know. But, you know, it comes down to, you know, it comes down to individuals. You know, it's not like this big, you know, force of nature that can't be changed. It's somebody is, is why people, that they're not getting processed, right? And so I'm looking at all these articles coming out, and I don't know, I, again, I really didn't pay very much international relations uh, before um, before all this, but I'm trying to figure out, like, how, who's, who's who? Like, there's all these little groups, you know, and there was this article, I don't have the screenshot of this, but there was an article that came out and saying that um, the U.S. was partnering with the Taliban to go after ISIS. Well, the reality is, is, you know, I have one of the people that has been helping us. I consider part of our people now. They have, they have a whole network on the ground, and he sends me, like, you know, pictures of some of these attacks. They're not ISIS. They are NRF, which is their National Resistance Front. They're former Afghan soldiers, military soldiers, and their former Afghan allies that the Taliban are tracking down and killing. And then they claim it's ISIS. And I have to say, like, you know, they they must know that. I mean, I had, a, I was trying to figure out, like, you know, what was, someone told us that they had a list of Taliban members that had been brought to the U.S. And then I asked someone else, and they said, no, 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 I asked one of my contacts, and he said all these people are uh, CIA informants. But the CIA has also released people who are, um, that are Taliban to go back in and stir things up, right, currently. And I'm not talking about Trump's 5,000 people. I mean, this is what's going on right now. So... He was like, well, I don't know if that's true, but I'm thinking, well, well, if the CIA is actually working with the Taliban, then that could be true. I mean, they could have brought them there, right? So it's like trying to figure out, like, there's all this manipulation going on. It's like trying to figure this out. And I was asking, I was asking somebody, like, okay, well, what what is behind this push to recognize the Taliban? Because it's just so weird. What is going on? So he was telling me that, where is it? I had these all. No, is that right? Okay, so he tells me that there's this one journalist because that is uh, basically manipulating, uh, doing a lot of these articles, and he's from this same. According to him, he says because they're in the same tribe as the Taliban. So I don't know if that's true or not, but I mean, there's there's like people want. Um, I don't know. I, it, I, it just blows my mind that we would even consider uh, reconciling with the Taliban or supporting them in any way with all the things that are going on. But um, I think that part of it is that it's easy. You know, it's it's easy to support Ukraine because the Ukrainian people are standing up for themselves, right? And they already um, they have some advantages that uh, Afghans don't have because. We, like basically handed everything over to the Taliban you know, when we left and so um, everybody wants to back a winner and it's very obvious that the Ukrainians are going to win and it's a lot harder to sort things out in Afghanistan so because it's hard we bail right um, not only do we bail but we're considering backing exploiters and the abusers so I mean it's just it's bad I mean, it's so bad I, I, we had people that had to go back to Afghanistan to wait for visas and you know they're 
the attacks and the, the door-to-door -door searches. And, and we're not talking, I mean, the, these are supposedly the, the leaders of the country, and this is how they treat their citizens. It's like, it's literally like the Germans in occupied countries, you know, how they would terrorize people. They just do this to fellow Afghans. It's just, it's horrific. It's so horrific. So, you know, there's this going on. There's all this manipulation going on to try to get opinion to support, okay, yeah, it's really okay. It's really, the Taliban, they're really not that bad. Well, but it's, so it's okay to support them. So there's all that going on. And then, like I said, there's all this stuff with the school board going on. So this is like a little bit the closer, right? But again, it's the same thing going on. So this, this one guy that he's saying is trying to influence public opinion, he has, um, you know, he has connections with, um, you know, mass media that can, and different publications that can get his message out. And so that is one thing, but you know, you don't have to be a journalist with connections. If you have a lot of money, you can buy the attention and the eyeballs, which is, this is what is going on with the school district right now. So, um, I, back in, again, I never really got into any of this until 2016 when there was this huge drama over the hiring of a new um, superintendent. She's been basically a disaster every place that she's gone. Um, the place that she was before, the people that brought her in, they had her, had them on tape saying they had lost, there was a, a slate that had hired her. She caused so much drama in that district. It, they were a nationally recognized school district and it just went underneath her. And it took years of them, you know, talking to people, educating people about, you know, what was, you know, going on that, um, finally they, they actually, the, the people that were trying to get out, her board supporters actually made a documentary about it. It was called the reformers. So, um, and this is in Douglas County and so in Colorado. And so anyway, we have, uh, we're hiring a new superintendent and they have, they pick her as their sole finalist. So there's this huge, this huge, um, outcry, like people in Colorado are, you know, uh, celebrating and then they come over to warn us. I mean, I had, I knew about it because I got a text message from somebody at like seven o'clock in the morning to our Girl Scout group saying, um, oh yeah, this is going to be bad because she was from Colorado and knew. And I was like, oh no, I'm sure it's going to be fine because I was at that point, you know, I just trusted, I trusted them. I'm like, I thought, you know, I didn't know the, um, any of the board members personally, but I knew people who knew them and, you know, I trusted their opinion. <laughs> and, uh, so I thought, oh no, it'll be okay. You know? And then I started researching and found out like, no, like the people I trust, their opinion do not have an informed opinion. But in, that was in 2016, 2017, there's this, uh, oh yeah. So this is kind of like a little overview of the backstory. I have a link in the YouTube description, but something I wrote during the, going into the election in, um, hey, how are you? Um, it's something I wrote going into the election in 2017. And so they had this, we're coming into it and there was this guy who is Bob Rehack, so amazing. He's been like just, you know, a pillar of the community for years. Um, and he ran for, he was running against the person who I consider like, in my opinion, the axis of evil on our school board. And I was like, this would be awesome because Bob can totally win because he's amazing. So this comes, he starts running and he, this is a post from then from that time and he says um, he said during this election I was attacked by people from the right because I disagreed with them on one issue and that was on 
school vouchers. The real issue in my mind is blind obedience to agenda defined by someone else thousands of miles away. I addressed one group that asked me to fill out and sign a questionnaire before I talked to them. The first question asked, do you unconditionally support the policies of Betsy DeVos? I replied, are you looking for leaders or followers? Guess I didn't like that. So that's really what it was about. And they did not, he, he'd been a Republican his entire life, but this is a king, the one group that he was talking about was the King of Tea Party. And so in that, uh, this is a couple, I was going back and looking for screenshots of the thing that I'm gonna show you, but um, there was a big thing about vouchers then too. So this is a story back from in 2017. This is, this is back then. I mean, this was a uh, kind of a diagram network of all the packs that were like trying to get vouchers to pass and all that so anyway all this is going on Bob's awesome and um, there is like I can't even explain to you like how much crazy shady stuff went down that that year it, it was insane I mean I wasn't even I was I was involved in the election at all I didn't meet ever meet Bob in person until like two weeks before the election but I was like kind of mouthy and like giving my opinion on things and so I wasn't involved in I had some weird things happen and uh, he doesn't talk about this publicly but there were there were some really shady things happening happen that he went through um, same thing happened when was it I'm trying to remember it was last election but someone else that was running against the same guy you know it's like you can say it and then but when it actually happens it's just it's just weird it's so, it's so bizarre. And my thought was like, I are, why all this drama over Umbel ISD? But the thing is, they have like a half a million dollars in annual budget. They also do these bonds that are like no oversight whatsoever. And, um, yeah, um, it, they have these bonds that, that really like, I mean, they had, they had a bond that was like $290 a square foot for a cow barn that didn't even include the land. That kind of level of, you know, padding in the bonds. And it's just ridiculous. So there's a lot of money involved. And also, I'm really not quite sure how this, this all works, but it was very clear. And it wasn't clear to me until not, um, I didn't really, I didn't really know what was going on in 2017, but in 2018, when I saw like who was involved doing what, it was really obvious that it was either Abbott or whoever owns Abbott was the one that was interfering in our school in our school district because they, um, it was all this dark money that came in the school board race. And at the time, so that that election, 2017, they had 5,000 voters out of like I think there were 110 registered voters at the time and that was the most the most votes they've ever had in any election and there's all this dark money going in tons of dark money it was ridiculous so in that election I'm just gonna show you this this is this is how they roll because this is what's happening this election this election that the one that's spending the big money is a pack called Texans for educational freedom that screenshot was from they had like a million dollars like donated within a year that was the year end of uh, December 2022 so who knows like what that number is now but they're basically backing uh, school board candidates all over Texas there was a big story I don't have a screenshot of it but there was a big story um, about some drama in Katie and so they're the stuff that they're pulling is like so dirty that some of the people that they're endorsing are like, oh, no, 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 this is not what we're doing. But who they're endorsing here is, oh, it's these these three people who happen to be two incumbents and one new person that is uh, running against an incumbent. And here's where the drama starts. So the person that this guy, Drew Gutierrez, is running against is Robert Scarpo, who is He's um, been, he was on the board earlier and then he wasn't and then he just came on again. And the kicker about this that I think is so funny is that back in 2016 or 2017, there was this huge, um, the culinary Republican, uh, the, the whole thing, the whole narrative that they were pushing was that the 
liberals are taking over the school board and there was this plot and all of this and it's like no i mean they did not even the people that were there were just kind of they, they made up a second slate later but what happened it was just because they were you know the the incumbents were coordinating the people who planned it ahead of time were the Kingwood area Republican women. This is actually from 2017 too. And this is a picture here where they're just showing that they, this is before most people even filed. They are already planning a campaign strategy for the election. So it's like total projection. But anyway, so that election, this is part of what's funny to me. That election at the time of still on Scarpo's mailing list, he pushes the same narrative. Oh, it's just, there's this, this liberal agenda. They're just come trying to take over the school board. And he backs the incumbents, which who, by the way, are not backing him. He's running. Like, if this were the incumbent slate, he should be in that. He would be in that position with Drew Gutierrez. But they're mad at him because he, first of all, he goes and he asks a question of a CFO who I looked at his bio of the CFO of this, like running half a half a billion dollars of operating budget, annual operating budget. I mean, his highest qualification is like, he was over a warehouse or something. It was ridiculous. It just, I was looking at it. I'm like, is this the kind of, is this the kind of resume you should have for this kind of position? And the thing is he's from Humble. And so it's just a total crony thing. But Scarfo asked the CFO a question. The CFO got offended. And so they started going after him. And I personally think it's a Sitton doesn't like that Scarfo is asking any questions that he doesn't isn't allowed to ask. And like he's just supposed to like sit and like just accept whatever I guess Scarfo is sitting once. And so then the other thing was that they wanted to keep um it, it just they do whatever. It's such a shady school board. I, I can't even tell you. They just do whatever they want. There have been so many complaints filed against that district. Some of them with fines, most of them not. But there's usually rotate presidents who holds president of Scarfo's churn, and they didn't want him to be president, so they had Martina. And they're also trying to make her a thing, which is not going to happen. But Martina Dixon is like, this is a thing. Our school district is one where it's kind of like they is like a launching platform for political candidates. So anyway, that's against the board rules. And Scarfo said, hey, you know, this is against the rules. If you don't want me to be the president, I will decline. But she shouldn't be it again because that's against the rules for being in two years. Oh, no. So then they went after him. They wanted to remove him from all the committees. And he basically was like the entire board was against him. And so they were going to try to move, remove him, but there was this huge public outcry against them doing that. And he had a lot of public support. So they backed off because everybody on that board, everybody on the board right now, other than Scarpo, was either put there, appointed, was either appointed, was either ran with him on the slate, or they have been supported by whoever's supporting him. So it's like they basically, other than Scarpo, they owe their seat to whatever money's behind it. So this is what's been going on. There's all these, this is like, I guess I can get this over this fire. There's all these fires going out. This one up, there was also a, I'm not sure, I don't know if I have it. There was also a tech robocall that went out, a text message with no political disclaimer. And it looked like it was a, Robo campaign, which oh guess what? That's a criminal violation because if they if it's not texts aren't manually sent and somebody didn't opt in, then if they send it manually, it's okay. But if they don't send it in, if they don't, if it's just a mass call, if they haven't opted in, it's actually a criminal offense. Oh, they do that because they do whatever they want to do. So this text is for educational re freedom. Board members, they just do whatever the heck they want. So they don't follow the rules. So anyway, so there's this group, there's this slate that's been followed by being pushed by the Texans for educational freedom. There's like massive amounts of flyers going out. And then there are, there's this other pack that is pushing 
some alternate candidates. So just like these are these are groups that have been pushed by you know, they're catering to we're in a really conservative area, mostly Republicans. And so they're they're pulling to that. So they're doing the whole like just you know, the dog whistles that usually the GOP goes with, right? For school board race. And so this is this is they're already going for the conservatives, right? So then there's this other pack. This is a Kingwood Tea Party. So this is a tea party that had all the dark money flowing through them in 2017. So the guy who's behind this, James Lennon, he had, there was just like so much shady stuff that was going on, but he was like campaigning every single day in early voting for the, the incumbents at that time in 2017. And so he used to be, like kind of the political boss of the area, like if you, to deliver votes. And so he would get all the money. So I'm not sure exactly what happened, but he's obviously lost um, the confidence of the big money people that are coming in from outside. So this again is outside money. So before 2017, it was a lot of outside money coming to a local person to deliver votes. Now it's a lot of outside money going to this other political pack, Texans for Educational Freedom, that is, um, I guess it's Chris Zook that is like running those numbers. So there's just massive, massive amounts of money and more money than sense. Like they don't even know how to follow campaign rules, but they're just throwing a lot of money at it. So anyway, so Lennon, obviously, he's not in anymore. He's not in the in-group. But he still has all these connections with strong these strong relationships with local conservative groups. So he goes and he makes his endorsements. And he picks Scarfo. I mean, you just have no idea what a showdown this is. He picks Scarfo to endorse him. So people have, have asked Scarfo. He's like, you know, I don't have any control over this endorsement. I'm not running with anybody. But Lennon knows Scarfo has community support and all of this, all of this other stuff, they just, you know, this other, this big outside pack just thinks they can, you know, if you, you push enough money that you can get the votes. So these other candidates, they are like, so the, the Texans for educational freedom, they're, they're pretty far right. They're for, you know, they're trying to, Texans for Educational Freedom are trying to push vouchers, right? But this other group that Lennon is supporting, these other candidates, they're like beyond right, beyond that there. They are um, behind the book banning. And this is a thing about, I actually got invited to one of their meetings, not by, not by them, but by somebody who was presenting some information about criminal violations that had happened in the last bond election. So they all know like the real, the real stuff, the real problems, like the um, stuff about like the open meeting law, uh, laws that are violated, the the actual criminal violations with the bond election. Uh, one of the people in that group had like pulled um, different uh, all the all the uh, stuff from uh, the superintendent's uh, contracts, and they ha they have all the facts. They, they can, they know what actual problems are, but they've chosen to, to go on like more like the cultural, uh, you know, hot points, the, the buttons that are being pushed nationally. So as far as the banned books, they have this whole, there's one person that's been challenging a lot of books and they had a, um, a list of the books with everything highlighted in the passages that were a problem. And the thing is, I, I was looking at some of them, and some of them I agree that probably I wouldn't want them in a public school library. But others, I was like, I, I mean, I consider myself pretty conservative. I would never think that these books are a problem, ever. And back in August, the board, and I'm not, I'm not a fan of the board, but I thought they had a really great response to um, the situation because it was brought up. They 
had just a procedure for where books could be challenged, um, where they would review them, and then some of the books were also put on the list that if, you know, they're kind of like, if parents had a lot of issues on them, they're kind of like flag books, so they have to have parental approval for them to be able to uh, get the books out. So, again, I'm not a fan of the war, but I thought their response to that was a good one. So that's already been, like, done and resolved, right, back in August, but they're still pushing that. So they ignore the actual issues. Their other big thing was critical race theory, and I was like, it's literally spent like almost the entire program meeting and bring up like boogeyman CRT. I'm like, that's not what that is. I gave them suggestions. I gave them recommendations for where to go and, you know, get like real information about what critical race theory was and, um, they ignored it. And so, um, you know, they just choose to, you know, try to amp things up on book banning CRT and arming teachers in schools that's what they're running on so they're like further right than right then so there's this division within you know the it's basically these two packs that are battling out for the same group of people so Lenin of the Kingman Tea Party picks Scarfo because Lenin has a better sense of what's going on and this level of support that um, Scarfo has and he's also bringing in his other two people. So maybe he can get some votes. Like if he sends this out, maybe he can get some votes for this, these other two people that are, you know, because he's, he's actually aligned ideology, ideologically with them. But might be able to get some, but Scarfo, I can't imagine him not winning. Uh, if people go out and vote, if he gets his voters out, his supporters out, you know, they will win. He'll win. But he can also claim credit for scarf for winning, right? So this is what's going on. Drama on this. So these two on the right, Deaver and Grabowski, they're also, they have been working with somebody who is running for Scarfo's position. So this flyer is shared into a Facebook group with like 15,000 parents in the district anonymously. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like who shared this? Is this one of these two? Because, and I've been told it was, but I, I don't have confirmation of that. But anyway, there's some massive drama going on in the school board race. So this is, this is, this is what happened. So this week, there's been a lot of crazy stuff going on, but there was a bunch of drama about some signs. And I'll show you in um, what happened. And this is just a good example of how people manipulate and it, it parallels like personal manipulations too. This is just what manipulation is manipulation. And we need to recognize what that is. But I was like, look, I said, do not trust anything from that crew about science because they lie and they manipulate. Do not believe them. And so anyway, so we, I was, yesterday I was going back and I was looking to see what screenshots I had from 2017. I actually have quite a lot of them. And I, but I found went back and found this. This is what happened in 2017. So just keep in mind, this guy Drew that's running against Scarfo in, in that position, he was a treasurer for the bond elect, the PAC for the bond election that where there's questionable, questionable activities. So he's, in my opinion, he's sitting this guy. So again, he would just be another, sitting just wants everybody on the board that's gonna be doing what he wants. This is my opinion. So this is what happens. This is what happened in 2017. This is right before the election. So Robert Sitton posts on his campaign page. This is not there anymore because he got in trouble the last time he ran for blocking people from the page, which he's not as a, as a uh, it's not allowed to do that. That's actually illegal now. But anyway, so he he deleted that. But this was his. This is a screenshot from 2017. So he goes and he complains about some of his signs being stolen. So here's the thing about these, like, you know, those types of signs. People just don't like signs anyway. That's just what happens. When I, I used to do a community event, it was a free Easter egg hunt. We would have somebody go out in the, the morning and put up, you know, signs, a sign saying, hey, free egg hunt this way in the morning of the event. 
pick them up after the event. So they weren't even up a full 24 hours and we would lose signs every year. That's just what happens to sign. It's like crimey river. Like just get over it. But anyway, he's like, somebody stole my signs. So then what happens? All of these people are like, just like, oh, oh, that's horrible. Oh, this is just so bad. And then another trustee at the time, Keith Lopez, posts without comment this picture of a, I know this is super grainy, of somebody picking up a sign at the administration building. So I just want to say something about that picture. Super grainy, with the amount of money that our district pays for technology, you would think they could get a better quality screenshot than that, but that's just par for the incompetent course of Humble ISD and their purchasing. So anyway, post that without comment, doesn't say anything about it, just post it there. And then there's all the people take that as a confirmation that they assume that that's somebody stealing sitting signs. Okay, so if somebody posts this in in a group that I was in, and we're, we're skeptical about his claim because again, shady, super shady. So we're talking about it. She was like, huh, what, what's the deal with the timestamp? Like the light on it should be dark by then. Um, also questions about, uh, you know, if it's, if it's even his sign, is it even his sign? It's, it's like, they're super shady. So going back and looking at it, this is a little bit closer. You can't really see it. All you can really tell is a color, which is kind of like a burgundy maroon color and white, right? As a two color sign. This right there, he's like in the back on the right. That is Robert Sutton's signs, red, white, and blue. <laughs> It wasn't even his sign. And that is how that, uh, more comments, they, they're just shady. It's like, okay, well, do you say something about it? Here's the thing, people don't, people don't actually care. It's like, you can tell them, you know, he's, he's a shady snake. He lie and manipulate, don't believe anything he tells you. I mean, this is a thing like for me and that school board, I don't believe anything they tell me. They can tell me it's raining. Not only would I go out and check myself, I would go and, and test to see if it's actually water. They could tell me two and two plus is four and I would run the numbers myself. My default assumption is that they're lying to me until I prove whether it's true or not because they're shady. So that was 2017. Then what happens this year with Sutton's guy, Drew? Okay, so this just happened this week. Again, you can't see this because he's deleted this now. He goes and he says, he has these pictures. And it's somebody, it's uh, Robert Sitton, or not Robert Sitton, Robert Scarfo, and the election judge and some other guy. So the precinct judge, right, that's there. He's claiming that they're stealing signs. So Scarfo standing there doesn't even have anything in his hands. And so people just take it as gospel truth. So you can't see this now, again, because it's deleted it, but when I went and first looked at it, if this had, he had tried doing other pictures there of like, oh yeah, here, here I'm with so-and-so at the poll, and you know, thank you for your support. Nobody likes it, nobody cares. This one got 28 shares. And so then he goes and he shares it again. He shares the same post again because on the first sign, on the first post that he shared, he has another picture about all these signs that were taken down. And then Robert Scarfo goes and replies to him and says, you know, I talked to you there. You said you knew it wasn't me. And he said, you know, you better change your comments or else he was gonna take legal action against him. So face to face, Drew tells Scarfra, oh, I know that you didn't take my signs, but then he goes on Facebook and accuses Scarfo of stealing his signs. So what actually happened was not that the signs were stolen. It was that the election judge took them 
down because there's a limit to the number of signs that can be there. And so they were, they were taken down because they were violating the number, you know, they, they just weren't supposed to have that many. You can notice that candidates don't follow instructions and don't read the rules. They can't even do that. They don't even know how to like run, like read what is acceptable at. <laughs> so anyway, does he ever disqualify this? No, I, I didn't get a screenshot of this, but afterwards he said, oh, I'm waiting for the investigation. You know, I'm just, we'll see, see what, you know, comes out. It's like he knew when he was standing there what the issue was. So even that is a manipulative and a lie. Then turns out there's another post that, you know, she's, she's there. This is election judge because he's basically, he's slandering, he's slandering a, uh, a an opponent, right? Another candidate. It's also slandering the precinct judge. And they have, so besides that, while he's there going back to, you know, make accusations to manipulate, to try to get, oh, poor me, poor me, I'm the victim, when he knew very well that that's not what it was. At that same time, they have video footage of him going into the election with and interacting with the poll, interacting with candidates. So you're not supposed to go in there and interact with them. You can't have any um, campaign stuff on at the time, right? It's within 100 feet. So, no. So he has, it's just, and not the smartest, not the smartest group. I mean, they just, they have like one note. They do the same thing all the time. I mean, it's just ridiculous. They're just so ridiculous. But what's even more ridiculous is that people still vote for these these clowns. I mean, it's ridiculous. I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't care if they're friends with yours. They're, they think you're a fool because they are playing you. So what kind of friends are they if they're playing you? <laughs> they think you're dumb because you don't ever question anything that they, they wouldn't do stupid stuff like this if you actually like checked them out and they know that you won't. So anyway, going back to manipulation, it's the same thing. It's like, these are signs of man manipulation. And so this is one, this is one that I, this would be a lot easier if I did my, I share the screen, but the problem is I can't, I'm on my iPad and I can't share a screen. I can't, it doesn't have that feature on my iPad, but normally if I was on my laptop, this would be a lot easier to go through my slides and share it. But th this is what they do in propaganda. They have a big lie, like a huge big lie, and then they stick to it. They, they never back up. They never acknowledge their, you know, they never admit the truth, right? They keep on, keep on going. And they have to like, switch to focus to just stick to one thing and have this emotional appeal this really like people have a strong response to it which is why that one group is sticking to book banning which has already been has been settled decided addressed months ago but it's a lot easier and simpler than going and looking at the numbers and looking at finance and it's not as uh, it's not as emotionally charged as book banning, right? Saying, oh, these are pornographic books. I mean, some of this stuff is just, you know, I have some opinions about what is triggering about some of those books to the people challenging them, but and I'm not going to get into that. But basically, it's just, it's a lot easier to manipulate emotions about dirty books than it is to explain the numbers and how people are manipulating that way. So they're provoking things. They're going in and there's been a lot of um, manipulating information, misrepresenting what people um, like opposing candidates say, um, lying about things. Um, and they just, all they have to do is put the accusation out there and then people don't do anything. They don't ever question it. They just like, because guess what? Somebody that you know that you're friends with can lie to you. They can. And so just because you know somebody doesn't mean that they're honest or trust, trustworthy, that they won't use you, that they won't manipulate you. Because manipulators 
manipulate. That is just what they do. And if you are in their path, they will do that. So, and they never end. It never ends. They will keep doing it. And let's look at, let's, so let's compare this to personal manipulation. This is really the same thing. So personal, so these are signs of personal manipulation, gaslighting, passive aggressive behavior, lying and blaming, um, threats, you know, it's just, it's just all of it. It's all the same thing. So the things, the same things that people do in their personal relationships, they do it on a larger scale within society. But it's same, if you recognize it, you can see, you can see what they're doing, right? And so it's like, if, people, there are people with a lot of money that are spending a lot of money to manipulate and get their own way. And the thing is, we choose whether or not we will participate in that and if we will respond to that. And if we, it's up to us. I mean, at, at the end of the day, we make, we are free will human beings. We have to choose ourselves what we're going to support. And we can't keep blaming it on other people for the problems. It's like, you have to choose not to be manipulated. Don't keep feeding it. The same thing with this person that's <laughs> causing me issues today. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I'm talking to a friend of mine who, she's she's been telling me, for months to like cut the scissors. And I was like, oh, no, I can, I can deal with it. I can handle it. Telling me for months, told me I, two months ago, I was like, okay, I'm done. Even like a year ago, I was like, I knew I could see that there were problems. And I almost, I said, hey, you know, let's just, I don't think this is going to work. And let him talk me out of it. Two months ago, it was like massive something that happened. And let them take talk me out of it and um and something this week and so now you know I have to deal with it and just it's going to be unpleasant and um but they don't stop pushing and breaking boundaries trampling all over them as long as they get what they want and the only way that they will ever even begin to stop is if people hold them account and not giving into that manipulative behavior so that's true in personal situations and it's true in you know our society and in our communities and internationally like you don't give in to terrorists there's a lot of a lot of people a lot of people walking around that they have the same I mean they would be if you ever told them this they would be really offended that if you tell them they have the same mindset as the Taliban but they do they don't want the Taliban they give them no room for, for free will they don't want to let anyone else have an opinion it's their way or no way and their no way is a lot of times they kill you you're dead and God gave us free will and he does not force us to do anything. We always have a choice. And this is one of the things that, um, especially in the church where if you're feeling like, you know, it's a manipulative situation or if it's between a fellow Christian, um, this situation that I'm in right now, it is, it is. Um, if it feels like manipulation, it probably is. And just because someone is a Christian doesn't mean that they won't manipulate you. And I've been in, again, been in this situation multiple times where a lot of times people will think it's so much easier for them to say that the end justifies the means. So they justify their behavior because they're thinking the end result, that they're they're trying to manipulate you into supporting or um, advancing is a good one. So they excuse whatever it is that they do. God doesn't work that way. He doesn't work. He never manipulates. He never coerces. And so if somebody has to manipulate you to do something, that's not God. And God's not in it. Because again, he does not force us. He always gives us 
free will. And that's one of the things that I have learned, obviously, that I didn't remember <laughs> this time, but I have learned this in the past, is that, you know, God's plan is not all on me. He does not ask me to do, he's only going to ask me to do what it is that I can't do. And he asked me to do what is good for me. And sometimes things maybe generally will be a good work, but it won't be good for me. And so I don't have to like uh, have myself destroyed for God's good, right? That, that's just not, that's not how he works. If it's his work, he can bring it about without causing harm, you know, emotional or spiritual harm to other people. And I've seen that happen a lot. I, I've seen that, you know, people have been in situations where, um, the people that were helping leave, like feeling like emotionally and spiritually raped and just absolutely. And as much as you say, this is not you know, you can say it and say it and say it again, and the word still wasn't heard. And the way people act, the, the way of operating continued. And that was one thing where, you know, I thought, this is a good work. I mean, this is, the goal is good, but the way you get there, you also has to be good. And if you are using manipulation and control to get there, it's not God. So, um, I think that that's important to remember. And I think that it's really easy to deceive ourselves thinking that we're doing God's work when we're really operating, um, out of a personal agenda and we excuse it. And if you have to lie and manipulate and just control, to get something to happen, you're not on God's team. You're not. You're not doing God's work. You're not on His side. And so whatever you think this little effort is that you're doing, at the end of the day, we all are going to be standing before Jesus on our own. And we're not going to be able to point to anybody else and say, and that's what Adam did, right? This woman you gave me told me to eat it. We all have to, we have to, we're held to account for ourselves. And we're not going to be able to even hide our own motivations from ourselves. It's going to be on full display. And I think it's better to recognize that now than to be having that conversation with Jesus on Judgment Day. I'd rather like be having some different conversations than that. So I think we need to all examine ourselves, like what our priorities are. Um, what, um, who are, you know, who are we really serving and how are we trying to get those ends? Because all of those, both sides, right? Both sides I'm talking about that, that are like manipulating and all the shady dealing. I mean, they're all, they're all like, you know, pandering to Christians, putting themselves on, you know, like, yeah, this is like good Christian people. Like if you're a Christian, you vote with us. And it's like liars and manipulators, liars and manipulators. And this is the other good thing. Like if somebody doesn't match up, does this match up the scripture, right? And this is first John four twenty. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. So if, way people are behaving towards other people doesn't line up with that you know God's not in it right he's not in it and this is a um, another verse it's like John 8 44 you he's talking to the Pharisees who were this is Jesus he's saying telling the Pharisees who think they're the religious authorities that they don't belong to God. He said, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he's a liar and the father of lies. 
So if you have to lie to get your way, or manipulate, or deceive, you're you're not you're not serving God. You're not. So anyway, um, those are just my thoughts. Examples of manipulation. Like I said, I didn't really get very far this week with the for the Afghans. I just kind of kicked myself because I've led this something more I should know better just get me so off course this week but we did have somebody that went in for their UNHCR application um, he in this whole long phase with the, their refugee certification he registered with SHARP uh, which is a Pakistan agency that uh, collects information for the, um, the UN um, agency. Um, he registered with them back in September 2021. And we had another family that went registered the same day, went last week. They got their, their UN case number. So this person, I didn't find this out until, I don't know when, when it was. Uh, I my, my time's kind of off this week, but um, it's either Monday or Tuesday. They told me he was going tomorrow. Must have been Monday. They told me this. He's going tomorrow, and they're ten hours ahead, so I didn't know exactly when that was going to be. And so, I sent a message to our our guy that has been uh, working with people to prepare their testimonies uh, and their cases and get their documents together so they can have the best, you know, um, results that we can manage. And um, he was not able to meet with him, like connect with him in time, because I literally just found this out probably like within, I guess when he called them, they had already left. And um, I asked uh, how it went, and he said, oh, we don't know yet. So he didn't give a case number. So I'm going to have to stress, we have our Monday Bible study, I'm going to have to stress with them that it's very important that they do not go to they don't go into those interviews until they're prepped for, um, you know, prepped for it because two, almost two years for that interview and we still don't have a case number. Uh, I'm still waiting for a couple of case numbers from people for, um, to take it into my congressperson's office to see if they can ask the embassy to get somebody to move something. But, um, I guess I'm just going to have to say, I'm going to take it in and if you're not on don't give it to me yet. I'm going to take it in without you. The other thing is I met, was connected with somebody this week who, um, he, he was, he met some of our people at a, um, some celebration and, and found out they were Christians and he, they gave him my, um, my phone number. I always ask like, okay, so who do you, who knows you and have them contact me because I try not to answer the people in Pakistan, but um, anyway, uh, it was one of, our, one of our people, but he is a, this is a kicker about this, he worked for the Afghan government, and he has, there's a couple issues, he has an SMB obligation in, he has been to the UNHCR, he's been to four interviews with them, and, but this is the thing. They, he said they have told him they're going to give him a referral to the UK. He said, but that was a month ago and I haven't heard anything. But they haven't given him that refugee certification. And that's, I have been told that that has happened. So what should happen is like, we recognize, yes, you're in need and give him the refugee designation. He's not getting it. He's not getting it. And oh, by the way, he has this, he was asking me what to do about it because his passport expires in two months. I said, oh, well, it's really easy to renew it at the Afghan, at the Afghanistan embassy in Islamabad. He said, no, he has a special passport because he worked in the government and they can't be renewed. So, um, so there's no question about it. This should be a no-brainer, right? And they're still not giving him the refugee certification. So anyway, that was this week. And Monday we had, we've been talking about testimonies. This is really cool. I wish I had, I'm going to have to talk to them about this to see if they're comfortable um, recording any of this because we had, we've been talking about testimonies, not only, you know, just, you know, testifying to like uh, persecution and their basis for being.
being, you know, for asylum. But also, you know, I've been telling them that, you know, when they get to wherever it is that they want to go, that they are, you know, people are going to want to know their story. Like, how did, how did someone become a Christian in this, in this Islamic country? And so you need to be prepared to tell your story. And just, I've just been trying to prepare them in general and telling them, you know, you have to, you're going to have to be cautious, you're going to have to be on guard. There's some people that, you know, come in contact with aren't all going to have good intentions. You're just going to have to, like, be aware of that and recognize that some people aren't going to want to use your story to their own end. Being aware of manipulation. But um, Monday, uh, there's two, two of our people, I mean, more than this, but two of the people that shared their, uh, I asked them, like, what have you found effective sharing to Muslims? And um, they've worked as missionaries, in, like, in Pakistan and Afghanistan. And so they were talking about how to tell your story. It's so good. It was really, really good. I wish I had a vision of it, but I didn't. But um, anyway, he, this this one person said, he said, I've learned how to tell a 60 minute t- test or 60 second testimony. And he said, you know, this is this is the way I was, you know, this is how I met Jesus and this is the way things are now, which is basically the same thing that um, I saw by the struggle. But he said, before I was depressed and then, you know, I met Jesus and now he's like, I'm happy, you know, I have I have peace. And uh, I said, Well, how do you like engage and interact with people? And he said, Well, you know, and they said in Pakistan, people are really friendly, so we just get to talk to them, and we just, you know, we'll, we'll tell them things. It's not like America, where everybody's too busy, nobody will talk to you, but he said this one, this one man um, was looking very angry and upset, and he said, I just, you know, told him that, you know, my testimony, and that's how they started, started the conversation. So, that was really interesting. That was really an awesome, an awesome meeting. I really wish I'd recorded it. I have to remember that. I... I mean, I guess there were things that happened. It's just the last half of the week has felt like a complete wash. So <sighs> tomorrow's a new day. I'll just have to um, be better about refocusing. <laughs> refocusing my thoughts in the middle of all this other garbage. So <sighs> life goes on. But anyway, that's this week. And again, I uh, if you want to, I'm just going to go through this. If you want to help out and, oh, this is what I've been watching a lot of scam fish because I've been like trying to figure out like how people run scams. Is this that one um, person that contacted me a while ago that said they were Christians at work? I, I knew I could tell it was a ring, but I'm not sure. I'm I'm pro- hesitating about sending them to like different agencies to put them on a watch list because you know what if they're what if it's like a total what if they're using like an innocent person's ID? We never got to the point of when they were asking for money. So, I don't know. But so I've been watching Scamfish, and I guess they, the scammers from Lagos, Nigeria, use a lot of um, cards. But why was I going to say this? I don't know. I lost my train of thought now. But, um,. What I was going to say was, if you want to help people, um, don't send gift cards. And uh, you can't actually send Western Union to Afghanistan, but um, I, unless if, I, I, I personally would not send money to people unless if you actually know who they are. But there are ways that um, you can help people, like if you come in contact with a family that needs help there. And one of those is the ASEAL app. You can just download this on your phone, and there's two parts to this. One of this is buy good, and the other is sell, uh, send good. And so, on one hand, it's like um, Afghans have this shop where they can you can support them. A lot of the women uh, that used to you know sell things in the marketplace they can't anymore because they are basically banned from being in public. So you can help support families by buying things there. Was Afghanistan also. Um, I haven't seen it lately, but there's some things from Turkey too. But the other part of it is send good, and you can buy care packages. So this could be for food or um, like clothing or just things that people would need there. And you can say, okay, I want to send it to this family, and they'll 
and register them with a seal and they will go out and they will locate the family and they will get either the food or whatever it is that, that they, you know, the package that you need. So that's an easy way to get it to, um, to help a verified person, like one-on-one -on -one direct support. So that's one way. The other way is um, mobilerecharge.com and you just need to have the person's phone number and their, um, their uh, carrier and you can add um, time to their phone. I mentioned that it's really important. That's really their only connection to the outside world because um, I mentioned last week that my college kid that is um, helping prep everybody for their interviews, his, he lost, he thinks he's lost his, his UMA share case because he didn't have a seatbelt there. So, this week. So, anyway, um, and also, hopefully, that Welcome Core is going to be opening up in Phase 2 in a couple of months. I hope I hope that's like an actual real thing that is sincere and that we can, uh, according to what it says, we can, if we have sponsor groups, we can refer, if we have a sponsor group here, we can refer one of our families in for information. So that would be like really amazing. So if you're in a church and you want to help out some Afghan Christians, let me know, and because uh, I have some, I have a lot. But anyway, um, that's enough for today. I hope you have a great week, and I hope I will have some better, more progress. I like moving, when things move. I don't like being stuck and delayed, so I just have to get my mind right. But anyway, hope you have a great week, and see you.